Hi, today I am going to speak about the split thickness skin graft. Coming to the history part, earliest known split thickness skin grafting method was developed by the Ollier in the year 1872. Ollier called this technique as dermoepidermal grafting, which means which involves a entire thickness of the epidermis and a partial thickness of the dermis that is dermal layer of the skin. So hence it is called as dermoepidermal grafting. Professor Karl Trist, a chairman of the surgery department of Leipzig, presented his technique at 15th Congress of German Surgical Association in the year of 1886. Hence it is the split thickness skin graft is also called as Trist graft. Definition Skin grafting is a transfer of cutaneous tissue from one portion of the body to another. So as I told, it include a graft that contains a epidermis and portion of the dermis. Coming to the introduction, SDSG that is split thickness skin graft is an autograft. I am talking about the autograft in this presentation are taken from the lateral thigh, lateral side of the thigh as well as trunk as these sides are both aesthetically hidden in the clothing as well as easy to harvest from due to their broad surface area. Donor site can be used more than once after appropriate healing has taken place. Classification based on the thickness, thin, intermediate and thick. Thin split thickness skin graft which has the thickness varying from 0.15 to 0.3 mm whereas intermediate from 0.3 to 0.45 mm whereas thick skin graft is referred to the having the thickness from 0.45 to 0.6 mm. General consideration graft take thick split thickness skin graft require more robust recipient wound bed than that of the thin split thickness skin graft. I repeat, thick requires more clean wound than that of the thin, which means thicker the skin graft, the less chances of acceptance or thicker the graft, more healthy area is required. Regarding the contracture, primary and secondary contracture are the two types of contracture. Soon after harvesting the graft, the contracture takes place that is 20 to 30 percent of the graft harvested skin get contracted that is called as primary contracture and after placing over the wound there is as a wound healing procedure there will be a contracture that is called as secondary contracture. Primary contracture is because of the passive recoil of elastin fibers in the dermis so, which means primary contracture more in the thin STSG and secondary contracture is more in the thick STSG. So more the dermis you take, so the more primary contracture. And secondary contracture is because of the myofibroblast. Aesthetic match. Meshing of the STSG significantly alter the aesthetic effect. So more the meshing, the after receiving the graft, so it will turn into hypopigmented. So less meshing, so more the area you are covering with the harvested skin, then it will become hyperpigmented. Durability. STSG do not withstand the force bearing areas like palms, sole and joint. Stages of STSG take. Imbibition, that is soon after harvesting, we place it on the wound and afterwards there will be a passive absorption of the oxygen and nutrition from the wound bed by diffusion mechanism. By diffusion, it will take the oxygen as well as nutrition. So at in this period, graft remains pale or white. And it can tolerate the ischemia for about four days. The, any harvested skin can tolerate the ischemia for four days. And this imbibition will take place for first 24 hours and afterwards there is a starting of inosculation. There is a vascular network between the cut vessels on the underside of the skin graft and the capillary bed in the wound bed. So this is called as inosculation. Graft become pink in this 
period and typically occurs at around 48 hours after the graft placement after the 48 hours so inosculation starts revascularization this is the third stage of the uh, sdsg so endothelial cell proliferate and slide from the recipient site by following the pre-existing vascular based lamina as a structure with graft endothelial cell eventually degrading imbibition that is diffusion inosculation so there is a network between the cut vessels and underside of the skin graft and revascularization that is a newer vessel forming between the wound and the skin indications for sdsg indicated when simpler methods of wound closure will not suffice such as healing by the secondary intention primary closure or negative pressure wound therapy whenever these get failed or not appropriate then we can go for the sdsg well vascularized and clean wounds are selected for the sdsg acute and chronic skin loss are the indications for sdsg coming into the contraindications of sdsg wound with active infection so there is more chances of rejection or else bleeding when there is a chance of uh, hematoma formation uh, and known cancerous patients where the, typically the cells are keep on growing there and uh, uh, there won't be any acceptance the exposed bone tendon nerve and blood vessels so the, directly we can't place the skin on the bone tendon nerve because the den bone our periosteum get nourished by the diffusion so uh, there is no chances of getting the neovascularization so there will be rejection so same thing holds good on the tendon nerve and blood vessels and now coming to the relative contraindications like joints and face joints are more movable areas so acceptance will be less and the face because of the aesthetic effect coming to a technique debride the recipient bed with the scalpel measure the recipient's wound size apply fresh blade to the equipments if you want to see the equipments details how to apply the blade and what are different types of uh, humbis knife or dermatomes then uh, the different videos are meant for that so i will give the my other videos link in the description box or else at the end screen so you can interested people can just surf that apply the mineral oil to the equipment and donor side to optimize the gliding if you wish to see the exact method of stsg so the link is given in the description or else in the end screen you can go for that apply traction and counter traction using the towel or towel clips on the either side bring the equipment contact with the skin at 45 degree angle and harvest the skin based on the type of the instrument you are using like if you are using the humbis knife then you have to move the zigzag manner or else if you are using the dermatomes then the gas dermatomes and all so based on that decide the, the method of harvesting place skin harvested skin on the normal saline until it is used apply epinephrine or soak, soaked gauze to the donor site the ratio is one vial of one is two thousand concentration of epinephrine in the five hundred milliliters of point nine percent normal saline. This is a concentration, so you have to soak uh, the gauze based on this solution and apply over the donor area. Meshing may increase the surface area up to six times. So it all depends on the whether you are using the measure or manually you are doing the meshing. So the if you are using the measure, the maximum surface area which can be extended that is six times example if you are the harvested skin is 10 into 10 centimeter so approximately 100 square centimeter after meshing the surface area will increase to 600 square centimeter fix the skin with running suture or interrupted sutures coming into the complications of stsg short term that is floating of the graft because of the seroma or hematoma hence even if you are not interested to increase the surface area to avoid this kind of complications we have to go for meshing of the graft long term complications like contracture and aesthetic issue may come and donor area 
the commonest complication is the keloid. In the short term, once the serum and hematoma appear, then there is more chances of infection. So this is all about the STST. If you like this video, then kindly subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon and forward to the needed people. Thank you. Thank you one and all for watching my video.